I mean, I think that the landscape is continually evolving. Um, I think uh, in the short term, the, the two kind of more interesting things will be uh, cladribine, uh, which I think probably will get uh, FDA approval. And uh, it has an interesting mechanism so that patients uh, get a oral pill uh, just for like five days or so, and then it carries them over for a year, and then they would get redosed. And in general, I'd say that the efficacy of the drug is pretty good and the safety profile looks pretty good. So I think that it'll be a good option for some patients. Um, another one that I think uh, might be interesting for some patients is saponamode, which is a retooled sphingosine receptor um, uh, drug. And it, um, it was trialed in a sector progressive uh, patient population and had some effect. Uh, and so I think uh, for some secondary progressive patients who really don't have a lot of options, that might be something that some find attractive. I think another drug, or another two drugs that are kind of interesting, um, uh, Antilingo is uh, being trialed again in a um, updated phase two trial uh, with uh, more careful selection criteria. And so that's something that may show some effect and over the long term I think will be appealing to patients because it may offer the ability to repair damage that's already been done to a certain extent. So I think that that will be exciting for people. And then the last one will be, I think would be like ofatumumab, which is uh, similar to ocrelizumab, but is a fully humanized uh, 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 monoclonal antibody that works on B cells. And uh, I think may be a little bit easier in, in the sense that it's an injection rather than an IV. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me is um, uh, ocrelizumab, I think, was a real <coughs> uh, game changer because I think it's got um, a great efficacy and the side effect profile as we know it to this point is, uh, I would describe as relatively benign. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the length of administration so that patients can take it and are protected for six months, I think that uh, gives uh, patients a lot of liberty. And so I think um, uh, the combination of those things makes this a, a very good drug for MS patients, uh, for many MS patients, I should say. And uh, I think that that, you know, we didn't have that option before for patients. Uh, so that's been a, a really nice introduction that's at least, uh, uh, for me, changed uh, how we think about relapse remitting disease. It, it was a proof of concept that there was a trial with rituximab before uh, that showed that uh, by depleting B cells, you can have a strong effect on um, uh, you know, attenuating MS. And um, so we expected that this would happen with ocrelizumab as well, but we had uh, large scale phase three trials that we didn't have with uh, rituximab. Um, but when the rituximab uh, early phase two uh, data came out, it was kind of a proof of concept that um, uh, you know, B cells are involved in the disease and depleting B cells actually can help uh, treat the disease. Prior to that, I think we really were more heavily focused on T cells as being uh, heavily involved in the pathogenesis of MS and the B cells were um, playing a, a lesser role. And I think because we're able to have a nice effect on the disease uh, with the B cell depletion, it tells us that it's playing an important role. So I think there are two things. I think uh, we need uh, treatments for progressive uh, MS. We have uh, some treatments that have been approved. We, like for example, ocrelizumab has been approved for primary progressive MS. And saponamode probably will likely be approved for second progressive MS. But at the end of the day, actually, the effects uh, on the disease in those patients I would describe as somewhat weak. So I think we need better treatments for progressive disease. And in fact, I think we just need simply a better understanding of progressive disease and what's happening. What is the pathophysiology? We have some ideas, but I don't know that we have any sort of uh, definitely defined uh, framework. Um, and then I think the other uh, big need is just to understand in early relapsing disease, is it better if we use stronger drugs um, earlier, or if uh, it doesn't really matter, it's more just that people get on treatment more immediately. Um, so um, I, I have my own uh, theories, but I think uh, ultimately there are uh, people that are have put together uh, trials uh, that will know the results of. It'll take us four years, but I think those will be important.